when you write a novel, you have to, you have to do, engage in the process of world building. Right? And you have all these linked systems in reality. Just, I mean, this is, we have a reality, of course, but in, in you know, the, the New York City reality of Kim Stanley Robinson's New York 2140. This is the cover uh, art from that, from that book. And uh, uh, sea levels have risen by 50 years in a very short period of time. What does this mean for, if, it, if they've gone up by 50 feet, for a city that's on average 33 feet above sea level, what does this mean? Oh, well, you're going to have this, this super Venice that he calls it, right? You're, you've, got, you've got flooding, permanent flooding, up to about 46th Street. And what does that mean for how people move about the city? What does that mean for, uh, in, in, a, in a rapidly decarbonizing economy where you don't have long-distance transport that's as easy? What does that mean for food production? Where do people get their vegetables from? Where do people get their produce from? What does it mean for the governance of small-scale organizations like a, an, an apartment co-op in New York City, right? These are the types of consequences. You have a global change. You have the, the, the effects are felt locally, right? And you have to play out how all these things are going to work, right? It's a model. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Kim Stanley Robinson's opinion of what's going to happen. But I don't know. I think he's onto something in, in uh, most of these things. Um, I know that Anna Lee Newitz spoke recently um, about, I don't, what was she talking about? Uh, science needs fiction. Science needs fiction. And uh, she had a, such a fabulous example of how you have, to, you have to come to grips with the consequences of your narrative arc. You're like, okay, so she's got this pirate in the Arctic, right, who's, who's on the internet a lot, on, a, on shipboard, and then she's like, oh, God, where does she get the internet from, right? And so she had to invent something, to, a technology that, that provides internet in the Arctic. And, and you know, this is, this is the notion. You have to flesh out these worlds. You're playing with complex systems. It's actually not a huge point. I mean, well, it's, it's an important point, but it's not, it doesn't need to be belabored. Um, I, you know, this is a fan art for uh, Paolo Bacigalupi's uh, The, the Wind-Up Girl. And, you know, in a decarbonized world, Supply chains are going to be highly altered, right? How do you, where do you get your food from? Where's the energy to run manufacturing? Where does that come from? Right? If you have, a, if you have a, 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 an industrial plant that produces whatever the machines uh, that you're, you're trying to build, where do you get the power to, to run your machinery, right? These are all things that come out in, in the wind-up girl. So... That's point number one. Point number two has to do with imagining the future and imagining better worlds. And again, there's this terrific Moshe Hamid uh, quote, part of the great political crisis we face in the world today is a failure to imagine plausible, desirable futures. We're surrounded by nostalgic visions, violently nostalgic visions. Fiction can imagine differently. I think this is an enormously important idea and I feel like it probably resonates with anyone who is dissatisfied, say, uh, with the current administration and politics in America. We really are feeling this incredibly violently nostalgic moment. And, and typically these nostalgias are for things that really didn't happen, or they certainly didn't happen the way we remember them. Memory is, a, is an imperfect process. And so by writing fiction, we can imagine a better world. And I think this actually has really important implications for the type of fiction that we should write. And, and in particular, uh, I, I took all the slides out of all the ridiculous movies that have dealt with climate, but there are lots of them. You don't have to like, think very hard about it. And there, what, what's the commonality of them? They're all post-apocalyptic. You know, we love Mad Max and Waterworld, and you know, we didn't love Waterworld, but <laughs> we love the idea of it, right? These are, these are post-apocalyptic stories, and uh, they're not better futures. Maybe there's some, her you know, uh, Katniss Everdeen or whoever, you know, comes in and, and does the heroic thing, and, and that's, that's interesting. But it's not, we're not imagining a better world. I think we need to do better in imagining better worlds. And the thing is, there's plenty of fiction that does exactly that. So that's the good news. Now we have to convince Hollywood and whoever makes TV shows. Thank you.